What's going on guys? This is Vanilik Puma and today we're going to be doing something similar but different from what I normally do on this channel and cover Metro 2033 Redux. And in this video, I'll be going over 8 of what I think are some of the best guns and weapons in that game. Now, a few things before we start. This video is going to focus primarily on guns. After all, I think grenades and throwing knives are pretty self-explanatory, and there's not much to really talk about with these, since you can usually carry them regardless of what guns you use. Also, I should probably mention that a lot of the choices and placement of entries on this list will be dictated by my own personal preference, and you may find that certain weapons work better or worse based on your own playstyle. With that in mind, you should experiment and try different guns, though I think you'll find many of the weapons I'm discussing here tend to be quite good if you're looking for some recommendations. Otherwise, and I guess without further ado, these are what I think are the top 8 best guns in Metro 2033 Redux, starting now. Number 8. The Revolver while I'm not the biggest fan of the revolver, and I tend to discard it fairly quickly, the revolver does have a number of advantages that are worth talking about. First, and because it's the only pistol in Metro 2033, it has the advantage of being the only weapon in the game to use magnum ammo, meaning that its ammo type is totally exclusive and you won't have to worry about ammo crossover like you might on weapons like the VSV and Kalash, or the Shambler and Duplet. The revolver is also decently powerful and can equip a number of different upgrades as well. You can get versions with silencers, extended barrels, a stock, and of course you can get various scopes and sights on this thing if you want as well. So you may find you can get a surprising amount of use out of the revolver. The main reason I tend to forgo this thing though is because I find it difficult to use. Not only is the fire rate kind of low due to how it's a revolver, but the magazine size is also low, meaning you really have to make your shots count and there can be a high penalty for missing targets. Also, I typically tend to use a rifle, shotgun, and then some other type of weapon like a Tahar or Hellbreath by late game, and because of that, I usually let the revolver go by the wayside. Ultimately, I'm pretty sure most of you know how to get this thing already because it's basically the first gun in the game you get. You may find you want to keep that version and upgrade it, or you can look around throughout the levels and pick up a modded revolver and then upgrade that. Either way, definitely try out the revolver and see what you think, and if you don't like it, just drop it in favor of some other weapons. Number 7. The Kalash Rifle When it comes to your early game options for an assault rifle, the regular Kalash I think makes the most sense. Because it's so common amongst enemies, you can save your money by simply picking up upgraded versions you come across, as opposed to purchasing all of the upgrades like you would have to for the VSV. Plus, the Kalash also has an advantage over the family-friendly gun that you start off with in that it doesn't overheat, and you also don't have to spend hard-earned military-grade rounds on upgrades that reduce or fix the overheating issue. You're also getting a decent amount of attachments and upgrades for the Kalash too, with the ability to equip suppressors, various scopes, a laser sight, and an extended mag, which brings the ammo capacity to 45. So you should be able to get a decent amount of variety out of this thing, should you choose to actually upgrade it. The only downside to this thing I would say is that the Kalash 2012, which we'll go over later on, is just better. Granted, it's obtainable much later on in the game, but I really view the Kalash as more of a stepping stone until you can get the K2012, rather than as 2033 Redux's premier rifle. So you may find you're better off not upgrading the Kalash at all, and then saving your money to upgrade a K2012. Otherwise, the Kalash is a great rifle, and as soon as you can get your hands on or swap out for one, I would highly recommend it. They're pretty common, so they should be pretty easy to find. Just check the loot of enemies until you find one. Number 6. The Scrambler Shotgun in my humble opinion, and aside from a certain shotgun I'll be discussing later on, I think the Scrambler, or Euboinic, is probably one of the more practical shotguns on offer. Compared to the big gun, it can be equipped with more attachments like silencers, extended barrels, as well as various sights and scopes. And compared to something like the Duplet, which is actually probably a little stronger, as you can fire multiple shells at once, you'll find that you'll be reloading a bit less while also being able to conserve shotgun ammo a little bit better. Like the duplet though, the scrambler tends to be pretty common in that you can usually loot it for most enemies you come across, 
So much like the Kalash, you can potentially get a version with a bunch of upgraded parts and then simply add additional upgrades when you're eventually able to enter a town or something like that. Otherwise, I don't really think there's a whole lot else to the Scrambler other than it's basically the game's assault shotgun. If you want it, you should be able to find it pretty easily while fighting various human enemies, and failing that, you can always purchase it from the vendor in market. Number 5. The Tihar Pump Rifle Of the pneumatic weapons, I think I prefer the Tihar to the Helsing, despite the fact that the Helsing may end up being a little bit stronger. There are a bunch of reasons for this, but I would say two of the bigger ones are that the Tihar uses ball bearings, which are less expensive and more common than arrows. It also doesn't hurt that the Tihar seems to have much better range than the Helsing, and I think this is particularly important as being at a further distance allows you to more easily maintain your stealth as you're sneaking around and sniping. Damage wise, I'd say the Tihar is pretty good as long as you're scoring headshots against most enemies, with humans not wearing helmets being especially vulnerable to a well-placed headshot. That, and given the Tihar is pretty much quiet from the get-go and doesn't require a silencer to be attached to it, I'd have to say it makes more sense to get this rather than equipping one of your rifles, shotguns, or the revolver with a silencer. Just be sure not to overpressurize the Tihar as that can potentially break your stealth. If you want one of these, you can potentially loot them during the Lost Tunnels and Frontline missions. You may also find them at vendors as well, so be sure to keep an eye out for them if you're having issues getting your hands on one. Number 4. The Flamethrower So, the Flamethrower is a weapon that is obtained during the Dark Star mission towards the end of the game. As you might expect, the Flamethrower is pretty powerful, in addition to that it can hold a maximum of 200 rounds or units of fuel. However, it requires the player to monitor a pressure gauge, sort of like you have to with either the Tihar or the Helsing. Provided you're above the white tick on the gauge, the flamethrower should perform at its best, and provided it goes into the red, the weapon will become far less effective and require a repump to return to maximum effectiveness. In my experience, this thing is really effective against most mutants and definitely comes in handy while you're fighting off the various enemies during the Dark Star mission itself. Beyond that though, you may find it's a good thing to have and use provided you're in a pinch and ran out of ammo for your other weapons as it can prove to be quite effective in many of the other late game areas as well. If you ask me, the flamethrower is worth picking up once you get the opportunity to get it in the later missions. So be sure to pick it up during Dark Star. Number 3. The Kalash 2012 Rifle I don't think this entry is really any surprise to anyone, as the Kalash 2012 for all intents and purposes is the single best AR in the game. It comes with a stock mag size of 40, which is higher than many of the other rifles, it's capable of dealing great damage, it's got high fire rates, and it can receive most of the more desirable upgrades that you can get on other rifles such as a silencer, as well as various scopes, and a laser sight. The K2012 is really something to strive for if you're planning on using rifles because of these properties, and if you're going to spend money on upgrades, it makes the most sense to upgrade this when compared to something else like the base Kalash, VSV, or even the family-friendly gun. Because the K2012 is essentially the premier AR in this game, it's typically acquired later on, and you can buy one from the vendors at Polis. Number 2. The Absats Heavy Auto Shotgun So, the Absats is basically this game's heavy auto shotgun and features a number of advantages over other shotguns. Perhaps the most obvious of which is the fact that the Absats has a very high magazine size for a shotgun, clocking in at almost 20 rounds when not upgraded, and 40 rounds when upgraded with the extended ammo box. Additionally, you can get an auto-fire adapter for it that allows it to fire automatically, which can yield some pretty deadly results. Otherwise, there's an upgrade that adds a muzzle brake for improving recoil control, as well as a laser sight, which should be useful as you really can't aim down sights with the absats like you can on other shotguns. The downside to this thing is that it's obtainable later on in the game at the church. You could purchase it here from the vendor, and it should carry you really until the end of the game. In the end, I think this thing is pretty awesome, and it should be pretty powerful when dealing with most threats. Just be sure to not go too crazy with it, as you can run out of shotgun ammo fairly quickly, especially in ranger mode. And finally, number one, the Hellbreath Rifle. 
So the Hellbreath or Volt Driver is a fairly rare weapon in 2033 Redux that, much like the Tikar, fires ball bearings at targets. However, unlike the Tihar, which functions more as a stealth weapon that relies on air pressure, the Hellbreath is not a stealth weapon as its shots are quite loud and its shots are more electrical in nature. In fact, the weapon has to be charged in a way that's similar to the flashlight, though unfortunately the Hellbreath's power source and battery are independent from the rest of your gear, meaning that you don't have to worry should the battery on your flashlight go out. In a lot of ways, and despite the more obvious differences, the Hellbreath is sort of like a more powerful version of the Tahar. While it sucks you lose the Tahar's stealth capabilities, I think the damage the Hellbreath is capable of more than makes up for it. Plus, you're still getting the Tahar's very inexpensive ball bearing ammo, which is very convenient. In the end, the Hellbreath is a really great weapon in Metro 2033 Redux, and if you want it, be sure to purchase it at the Armory or Church locations slash missions. I think you'll find that it will serve you quite well. Alright guys, I think that's going to wrap up this particular video. I wanted to try something new, and I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you liked it, definitely feel free to leave a like, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload more videos, and as always, and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel, take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.